Amen. Good morning, church family. Wonderful word we have this morning. And I hope that we don't leave our Sunday school study into the scriptures that they put in the book. <laughs> because what's interesting is he chose to title this lesson wonderfully marvelous, but you don't see those words together until you get to verse 14, which is not in the Sunday school lesson. <laughs> So you got to study more than this book. And it's no, I'm not going to fault the editors. I know they're trying to have certain page numbers and I know that they leave it up to us to study. So we want to make sure that we study and let you know what's going on in the text here. Now this, this scripture is meaningful to me. My first student night at Russian Springs School of Theology, uh, the students asked me to speak. And as a young preacher, I preached from verse number six. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. And we tried to tell the school, never graduate. And some people, were, at first, they were taken Taken, taken aback by the title, never graduate, because we had a school where we were supposed to graduate. But David was saying, God, you know so much about me. Your knowledge and your wisdom is too high for me to reach your level of understanding. And I was telling them as a student of the word, we ought never get content with what we know. Just as God knows everything about us, we ought to try our best to know as much as we can hold about God. But even then, we still won't know the half of it. Still won't. We can't. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I can't reach it. It's a goal that I can never reach, but that's a good goal. Because it lets me know that I ought to always be growing. When you come to a place in life where you stop growing, you start dying. I'm going to say it again. When you come to a place in life where you stop growing, you start dying. In the second outline, verse number seven, David says, what, what, can, I, what can I go to get away from you? I can't do it. And it reminded me of a scripture that came to uh, my spirit. It, all, it, it does so often, but especially a couple of days ago when I saw that um, I believe it was the owner of Amazon who's uh, funding these little commercial trips into outer space. For about 10 minutes, they can go into outer space and come back. Now they got folks stuck in outer space into February. But now you you funding $30 million trips just to go up in outer space and just come back. And what the lady said in the interview when she got up there, she said something that I think everybody needs to hear. And I don't even know if she understood what she said. When she said, when I got up there and I saw, she said, our planet. She saw... She said, I saw no lines. I saw no boundaries, no borders. It, it wasn't uh, America and Mexico and this and that. It was just a planet. And I said, well, you need to take it up a little bit higher than that. What you saw was the earth is the Lord's and not ours. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. If, if you got a horizontal view of the earth, all you see is what's yours and what's mine. But when you get on up in the air, you can look down and you see what belongs to the Lord. And all of it belongs to the Lord. And that ought to let you know it doesn't matter where you go. If the earth is the Lord's, you can't get away from the Lord. But then back then, they didn't have spaceships. David, David, he could look up in the sky, but he couldn't get up in the sky. And so if David could get up in the sky, David would recognize that Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, and everything else belongs to God. There's nowhere that you can go and get away from the Lord. If I make my home on Mars, Mars is the Lord's. 
and I can't get away from her. It, they, them up there in the space station right now, they can't get away from the Lord. They can be up there and pray to God, and they can still make a connection with the Lord in prayer. That there's nowhere that you can go to get away from the presence of God. And, and, and it, it really struck me in verse 8 when, when David said, I know if I make my bed in heaven, you're there. But David said, if I make my bed in hell. <laughs> He's there. There's no gate that God can't get through. There's no line you can draw in the sand that God can't cross. There is no depth that God's hand is not too short. His arm is not too short to reach way down and pick you back up. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter how bad you messed up your life. You cannot stop the Lord from getting to you. He is there. It's not too late. Camden say amen. I mean, Camden say amen. <laughs> He's there. Even when darkness covers me. <laughs> he said the darkness is nothing to you. You'll make the light, the, the night shine like the daytime. Yeah. So what does all of this God knowing me have to do with being wonderfully marvelous. Because, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's wonderfully marvelous that God knows all of these things. But if all you read is 1 through 12, you feel like you've been dropped off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. David said in 13, you have possessed my reign. You covered me in my mother's womb. Psalm used this scripture uh, to, to uh, highlight their belief in not aborting a child. Uh -huh. Verse 14 especially. He said, I'll praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul know it right well. All of this Stuff that David says God knows about me. Yeah. David said it make me want to praise the Lord. Yeah. That's a strange thing, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Because if man knew everything about me, man wouldn't give me no credit, no praise. Man wouldn't want no relationship with me. Man would get rid of me. David said, you know everything about me. I'm going to give you praise. Why does this cause David to want to praise God? Verse 17 is what you need to know. Yeah. I hope in the Sunday school lesson you had your Bible over and not just the book. Verse 17, he says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. In other words, David said, God, you know everything about me. And it doesn't matter what I'm going through in my life because you know me. You have a plan for me. You know everything I'm going through. You know everywhere I'm hurting. You know the people that are doing me wrong. You know who's using me, who's abusing me. You know who's smiling in my face and talking about me behind my back. You know who says I love you but really hate me. You know everything about me. You have a plan for my life. He says, your thoughts are so precious. David said, if I started counting the thoughts, the good thoughts you have toward me, he says, they'll outnumber the sands on the seashore. That's something to give God praise for. God, you know me, and your thoughts toward me are precious. Therefore, I know I cannot count myself out because my situation is bad because God is in my situation I can't give up because the odds are stacked up against me because God is with me in the midst of it all 
I cannot ultimately determine what my life is based on my circumstances because God is in my circumstances. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think toward you. Some translations say, I know the plans I have for you. Thoughts are good, not are evil. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Some translation said to bring you to an expected end. Don't determine what your life is based on your circumstances. Just because you playing spades with a deck of cards and you ain't got but one spade. If that. You got no you got no jacks and queens and kings. You got no aces. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just because, as they say, life done dealt you a bad hand. Don't mean it's all over for you. Lord have mercy. And when he get down here, that, 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 that one benefit of God knowing everything about him, David says, is because I know that you know what's going on in my life. I know you still mean good for me. And then the second benefit is one that you got to be bold to recognize. In verse 23 and 24, David says, search me. In other words, David has made himself an open book yes, for the Lord to search his life out. David said, God, you already know everything, but I'm going to submit myself to you to search me and know my heart. Know my thoughts. Amen. Know my way. If there's anything in me that doesn't line up with you, God, I invite you to correct me. You, you already know me, but I put myself on the table. Because I want to be right with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why he was standing up here in the pool pit. <laughs> he, he said, if there's anything wicked in me, lead me in the way everlasting. How many of us are an open book to the Lord? Sometimes that's my prayer to him. God, you, you know my heart. Am I wrong in what I'm doing? Am I wrong in how I'm thinking? I had a deep conversation with the Lord sometimes. And sometimes I'm conflicted. Sometimes I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And I feel like I'm right. But somehow it feels like it's wrong. And I say, God, search me. Yes, sir. Show me if I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, correct me. Are you an open book? Even though God knows everything about you, do you invite God to search you? That's why David was a man after God's own heart. Being a man after God's own heart didn't make him perfect. David did some stuff we say we never do. But yet David kept himself open to the Lord to correct him. Amen. We thank you for allowing us to say these few words this morning. Beautiful, beautiful lesson. I just challenge you, just like Deacon Turner said, read the whole psalm. Still left some out, and there's, there's some good stuff in there. We thank you for allowing us to say these words again. We thank Deacon Turner for teaching us this morning. Got a minute or two to greet one another in love. And we'll convene for our morning worship. Let us remember that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.